Hello. Today I'm going to show you how to get input stored in a variable um, in Twine. This will let you make passcodes, um, quizzes, riddles, anything where you want to ask the user a question that's open-ended, have them type in something, and then look at what they typed in. So let's get started. I'm going to make a new story for this, plus story. Um, I'm going to call this one passcode. Is that something you can do with this? I type enter to add it. I go to the page. Um, I'm going to rename this passage because I really don't like untitled passage. I'm going to call it passcode. So there's two parts of this. Um, uh, and if you've watched the other videos that I've made, you'll know about them. Um, the two macros that we really need to use are um, prompt um, and set. We're going to make a variable. So the first thing we want to do is we want to check that we're going to ask a prompt. We're going to ask, the question we're going to ask is, what's the passcode? Um, and, you know, I like to test things out, see if that worked. Now, I've done something wrong deliberately here, so this is not going to work. So you can think of what that might be while we're waiting for this to load. Um, right? Uh, ah! Twine is giving me helpful information. It says the prompt macro needs one more value. I'll make this a little bigger. Um, needs it must be given a string and a string. Now a string here means a string of letters or characters. Um, that also got bigger. Uh, so we need to give it a default, which you might have remembered. Good job if you figured that out. Um, the default we're going to give it is blank because we don't want to tell them what the passcode is going to be. Okay, let's text that out. Um, Right. What's the passcode? One, two, three, four. Is that it? Um, okay, so now, having done that prompt, um, it shows up here, the passcode that I typed in. That's what we expect from prompt. And we see that set is not happy because it doesn't have a to or into. That makes sense. Um, we're going to want to store this passcode that we get from the prompt in a variable. So this is the part where I'm going to change the set macro. So I've, I've made the basic macro syntax with the parentheses, the name of the macro, the colon, those two dots, and the closing parentheses. But I need more things for set. Um, I need a variable. All variables in Twine start with dollar sign. Um, I'm going to call this dollar answer. It's going to be the answer. Um, and I'm going to set that answer to something. Um, but the thing I'm going to set to is the prompt. So this is a weird, this is a, not weird really, uh, it might be new to you. We're going to nest one macro inside the other. Now I've already made this macro and tested it out, and when you start nesting macros, I really recommend that you do it this way. You make the macro that you want, um, you make the other macro that you want, and then you say, ah, instead of setting this to a number, right, or a word, or anything else, I'm going to set it to this macro. So I'm going to I'm going to do control X to move that, control V to paste it. Now, if you're on a Mac, you're going to use command X and command V. Um, so we, now we're setting the answer to prompt. What's the passcode? Um, let's try this out. I'm going to do this in test mode, because I know that if I'm working with variables, it's really useful to use test mode. Um, so I have no variables right now. Um, the passcode, maybe the passcode is 000. zero, zero. Uh, so, right, nothing happened on the screen. So it's really good that I had this in test mode, because this tells me that, in fact, the variable dollar answer now exists, because it's been set, and it is the string quote, zero, 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 quote, in quote. It's, it's those, it's not the number zero, it's this string of four zeros. 
Um, if I wanted to do math with it, I would have to do something else. Um, but I don't. I just want to check if it is actually the passcode that I'm looking for. Um, so uh, hopefully you remember how to do if, um, the if macro. So parentheses, if, colon, like all of our twine macros, if dollar answer is, um, I'm recording this on July 11th, so I'm going to set it to today's date. Um, I need to put that in quotes because it's going to be a string, 00711. You can tell that I'm American and not European. Um, if the answer is 0711, eh, it could be 711. Anyway, um, if the answer is 0711, uh, we're going to say that's correct. Nope. Correct. Yeah. Um, so again, I'm using, remember for if, the thing that we're doing is, the thing we're checking is in the parentheses, part of the macro. The thing that we're displaying afterwards or doing if there's includes macros is, um, is in these single square brackets. Um, which we call a hook. So again, we're going to test it out. Test early, test often. The ultimate judge of is my program good, is it working, is testing it, you know? See if it does what you want it to. Um, sometimes it'll do something unexpected. Uh, sometimes that can be good. I've, I've had times where I'm like working on a piece of something where I'm like, oh, I want to do this. And then I get like really excited about it. I'm like, that was not what I thought was going to happen at all. But that was way cooler than what I thought was going to happen. Um, sometimes. Sometimes you're like, oh, I was hoping that was going to just work. And instead, I got an error message. And I don't know what this error message was. And they have to go and do debugging. And anyway, uh, tangent done. Um, so we're testing it out. We have what's the passcode? Um, I'm going to type in a correct passcode. That's correct. Yay. Um, I need to also test what happens if I put in something incorrect, right? Because, like, people might guess the wrong passcode. So I'm refreshing the page. Um, and now I'm going to try once again, one, two, three, four. That's a good passcode, right? Uh, and we see that nothing at all happens here. And our if statement wasn't true. Uh, we can actually look at our source. Um, we can look at debug view. Uh, it does tell us that we set this. Okay. Some useful things. Um, but maybe I want to do something otherwise. Um, let's see. Uh, so the easiest way to do something otherwise is there's no otherwise macro, but there is an else macro, which is basically the same thing. Parentheses else colon. Um, else depends on the if. Right, the else depends on the if that was before it. So it doesn't actually take any parameters at all. Um, we just close the macro and we give it a hook. Um, that's incorrect. Um, maybe I want to give them an option to try again. Yeah, OK, I'm going to do that. Um, so I want them to give them the option to try again. Uh, I'm going to make that a link. So two square brackets. Try again. Um, and I actually wanted that link to take them back to the same page. So I need a redirect thing that looks like an arrow minus um, shift period. Um, go to passcode. No, I want to close this here. Okay, so we've got a link. Try again. Goes to passcode inside this hook. And get rid of those extra spaces. Hopefully, let's let's test it out. Ah, so one good thing I'm seeing that this passage leads back to itself. Nice little loop there. Ah, uh, test. Um, 
do 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 do. <sighs> okay. Uh, wrong passcode. Definitely the wrong passcode. That's in connect. Try again. Hey, I get to try again. I want to just space that. Uh, maybe the passcode is passcode. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, okay, what was the pass? Oh, right. Today's date. That's correct. So, um, there you have it. How we do a simple passcode um, or question or riddle uh, in Twine. Okay. So, key things. Nested macro. Notice the two parentheses at the end. Um, we're using three macros here. We're using prompt. We're using sets. Oh, four. If and else. So that's some programming. Hope this helps. Have fun. Make cool stuff. Signing off.